you mentioned God. You uh, consider yourself a catch uh, wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've mentioned to you offline that I competed in a couple of catch wrestling mm -hmm. tournaments. Uh, can we go Wikipedia level at the very basic? You're the yes. exactly right person to ask, what is catch wrestling and what are its defining principles? I would say the easiest way for us to talk about and give uh, an overview of what catch is in the simplest terms is think of collegiate wrestling with submissions. That is essentially what catch is. And it's not surprising because collegiate wrestling is actually derived from catch as catch can. It's just that over time, certain aspects were, were um, uh, removed from the competition structure so that they became uh, null elements, things that were discarded. Uh, but it's funny that you can take high level uh, amateur coll collegiate types and you can show them a move and then add a little bit to it and go, oh, well, hey, that was just like what we already do here, but except, oh, I didn't know you could take it all the way to this point or you know, things of that nature, especially even when it comes to professional wrestling, like uh, teaching people like, no, that, that I know you're just using this for uh, in a show, but this is actually a real move and here's how it really feels. And so collegiate wrestling and wrestling in general for people who are not aware is, is basically two people start on their feet mm -hmm. and they have to score that they they're trying to take each other down and they have to um they score points along the way you can end matches by pinning them for example mm -hmm. on their back i think one way to describe wrestling is uh it's very much about figuring out ways to establish control and leverage in these kind of uh tie-ups or there's different styles where you can do more from a distance to where it's more about the timing and all that kind of stuff Ultimately, it's an art of like both upper body and lower body, and you could choose the different puzzles that you solve there. You could be attacking the head, the arms, you could be attacking the legs. There's also part of collegiate wrestling that's on the ground mm -hmm. that has more uh, what's called like a referee's position. Or right, whatever. the referee's position where you're on uh, your hands and knees, yeah. basically. And so... Uh, do you, do, you, do you understand what that's supposed to simulate? Why is that one of the standard positions? It's one of the standard positions because one, it's one of the easiest ways to actually get up. Um, but two, it's because you cannot be on your back. If you're on your back, you're getting pinned. And back exposure or being pinned is pretty much the universal wrestling uh, thing. One, taking the guy from their feet to the floor uh, and two, pinning them. As you go from like, was it uh, Cornish wrestling, t Turkish oil wrestling, Mongolian, sumo, uh, Indian, um, well, they'll call it Pelwani. It's also called Kushti, um, Jiu Jitsu, Judo. Um, so many of them is like, there's a you Sambo. Even if it doesn't end the match, it's still like one of the most important aspects of the competition itself across. So, but every style. And this is where submission, like catch wrestling or uh, submission wrestling or jujitsu feels different, which it seems like for most wrestling, for a lot of wrestling, mm -hmm. the dominance is the, is the goal mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to submission, mm -hmm. which I, I guess those two are related, but dominating the position. So that's what pinning is. It's almost like breaking your opponent like breaking uh, through all of their defenses to where they're completely defenseless and you could do anything with them that you want. Maybe that's a Wikipedia definition of dominance. I don't know. <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, it sounds very much like a uh, chain to a radiator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, uh, there's a thread that connects all yeah. runners. Uh, but submission feels different. Uh, I mean, it is actually different when you think about it across the landscape. I don't think radically different, but just still slightly different in that. Um, if you think of wrestling as being derived from, from, from combat, right? So, well, it is combat sports, but more, more lethal combat, getting somebody off their feet and onto their back is about as lethal a place for the person on bottom to be in general. I mean, I, 
I don't don't come at me with your talks about your fucking worm guards and blah 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 and whatever fit spider bear them. Yeah. Okay, get out of here with that. This yeah. is we're not talking about you in this highly uh, regimented sporting environment. We're talking about general, you know, all the body hair, none of the waxing human beings. So, uh, getting someone on their back. Okay, there. You, you, as you're trying to get up, you're getting hit with a rock or stabbed or what have you, set on fire. Who knows? Generally, these conflicts are not just isolated to one on one. It's if it's four on two, your 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 buddy that was with you back to back. Now he's on his back. What do you think? And now it's going to be one on one while three go on one. Yeah. So and then you go, you elevate this to to armored combat, right? Mm -hmm. And it's boom, put them on the ground. Oh crap, it's hard to get up. Well, while you're struggling to get up, stab. You know that's where jujitsu's uh, concepts come from with all their leveraging and off balancing is. Oh man, if I end up in this situation in tight close quarters combat, yes, we could fight it out with swords and knives and what have you, but it's way easier if the first thing I can do is foot sweep you on your back and then pull my knife and just go stick. Is there a thread that connects all of these different arts from not just arts, but from the very base violence of war, just like you said, that there's no rules mm -hmm. to the very regimented, uh, IBJF, I do jujitsu tournaments, and just you kind of laid out some of it, but can you go all the way to the well? So when you you start off with absolute skills in the sense of absolute offense and defense in the taking or preserving of life, right? Full on at its at its purest form of self defense and self preservation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you extrapolate part of that in that all animals train in violence. All play usually degenerates into some sort of soft violence. So be it cats when they're kittens and puppies and all the, everything learns how to kill, how to fight. Um, not that, you know, just to, that, that dumb alpha meme stuff where the idea is that, oh, by being alpha, that means you run around like basically just being a bully and a shithead. And it's like, no, actually alpha wolves spend very little time fighting because if you were actually alpha, you don't get into fights. Mm -hmm. There's no need to. Um, and if you are probably getting into any large amount of fights, it's probably because you're being a, a shitty at being an alpha and now people are tired of you being in charge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yet in the animal world, and it would be the same for human beings at that, that, that base beginning level of violence, there's a big risk. So I know that we live in this place with healthcare and where, or you might be in a place with nationalized health, whatever, right? There's, there's, there's band-aids, there's, there's, uh, 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 penicillin, there's all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but that's not the normal way of things, you know? Uh, yeah. There's a, a channel that just hurts me every time I, I used to follow it and I had to unfollow it cause it was too painful for me as a human being called nature is metal. Ah, uh, yes. On Instagram. It was, uh, sobering and then it was like this is too sober <laughs> it's <have> very to... <laughs> sobering so in there the risk is at its highest level there the damage you take mm -hmm. the the winner walks away hurt getting lamed in, when you need every aspect of your physical and athletic faculties to survive because it isn't going to be the the this isn't the first and it, it's definitely not going to be the last especially if you're the slowest one you know, it's a, what is it, what is it, uh, is a, a lyric from a clutch song. Uh, don't go for the fat ones, just go for the slow ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but that the universal truth of the way nature works. Just, well, you you said it's not yeah, cruel, well, it's not cruel, it's just the way it is. Yeah, I mean, watch uh, animals get into fights on, on any of these sort of documentary stuff. You'll see an intense short and then dispersal. Like you'll see as soon as one feels like, uh, things have switched yeah. just enough to boom, the bear or whatever it is takes off. It's like, I'm not, I'm done with this because if you can get out of there with just some scars and what have you, okay, you lose an eye. Eh, nah, it's not as good. Uh, you really get hurt bad and get infected. You're done, yeah. you know? So it, it there's a, a serious risk to be, um, that can come with these sort of things. Yet I believe that we are inherently 
born for at least aspects of and use of violence. And so at the end of the day, we need these things not just to not just survive each other, but they're they're a part of being able to hunt and other things. But uh, so violence is a part of human nature. Violence is a, is a is like an it's an absolute. It is in every person. It is a part of every interaction. It is a part of every every law. Every.